Hello and welcome once again to Kalgoorlie Airport. I'm heading over to Perth today so that I can film the Avro Lancaster at the museum there and I'll be flying with Virgin Australia Regional Airlines in one of their Fokker 100s. Now I did this flight just a few weeks ago with the Qantas Link F100 so I thought it might be interesting to compare the two. So let's go and check in and see how it goes. I make videos about planes. If you're into trip reports from flights around Australia and the world and tours through significant aircraft and museums, then please check out my channel and subscribe. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook. Kalgoorlie has a number of mines nearby, including one of the largest open cut gold mines in the country, which is right near the town. And you'll get a view of it later in the video just after we take off. So because of the large number of fly-in, fly-out workers at the mine, there is a relatively large airport and a number of jet flights in and out. Both Qantas Link and Virgin fly 737s, Fokker 100s and Airbus A320s between here and Perth. The check-in desks were straight ahead, although since I only had carry-on, I went straight in to find a coffee. We'll go through security and into the airside section shortly, although out in the public section there is a cafeteria which offers basic snacks and drinks. I was keen to film the arrival of an aircraft, so I went through security and into the sterile area. There's actually a Qantas lounge here, which you can see in my Qantas Link Fokker 100 video, although since I was flying Virgin, I had to wait in the normal chairs. And here's our aircraft arriving, and check out those reverse thrusters on the Rolls-Royce turbofans, which are distractingly attractive for unknown reasons. Now the Fokker 100 is a regional jet built in the Netherlands, and it's designed to be a short to medium-ish haul aircraft, capable of operating in smaller airports. The advantage of putting the engines up higher at the back of the aircraft is that the wings can be lowered to the ground, as they don't need any space for the engines under them. In fact, the whole fuselage can be lower, which makes it easier getting passengers and luggage on board. In fact, you'll see that we board via stairs which are integrated into the aircraft's doors. Our aircraft, VH Foxtrot November Juliet, was built in 1994 and flown by British Midlands until 2004 when it came across to SkyWest Airlines in Australia. These guys were bought out by Virgin and renamed as Virgin Australia Regional Airlines in 2013. The flight was called and we took off to get on board our aircraft. It looked like a perfect day for flying and the views on board were pretty spectacular. Virgin Australia Regional Airlines, or VARA, which I've just made up and it's possible that no one else calls them that, are a Perth-based airline who operate a number of Fokker 100s and Airbus A320s. Everything is essentially the same as any Virgin Australia flight, and they only really exist to help with some accounting trickery. I've got a flight later in the month on board one of their A320s, so keep an eye out for that. In fact, if you're into these types of videos, please consider subscribing so YouTube tells me as soon as I've uploaded one. Inside, the seats are in a familiar Rex, uh, sorry, Virgin Australia colours, with the red and purple headrests. I've always enjoyed the brighter and more youthful vibe you get with Virgin, including with their Atlantic and the late Virgin America siblings. The seats are in a 2-3 layout, which makes the A and B seats perfect if you're travelling as a couple. Here's my seat, 18A. Now don't select the last row if you enjoy the views, because all you'll see are the engines. Let's check out my seat in a little more detail, starting with the all-important overhead air vents. These are invaluable if you've just boarded in the middle of a Kalgoorlie summer, which can easily get above 40 degrees Celsius. In front, there's the tray table and a kilometre of legroom. Out the window, you'll get a nice peek inside the engines and a glimpse of the wing while also letting you see what's down below. There's also no power plugs under the seat, so make sure your device is fully charged. There is this unfortunately placed strut from the seat in front that might be a bit of a nuisance, although it's not too bad. Everyone was loaded and we're prepared for departure. Now if you're sensitive to noise, better to sit forward. Although I must admit that I kind of like the mechanical music coming from the engines. 
And by the way, the Rolls-Royce TAE 650 15 engines were designed with new technology developed from the famous RV211, which saved Rolls-Royce and powered many 747s as well as other aircraft. In fact, the fan that you can see on this one was scaled directly from RB211's fan. I mentioned the very large open cut gold mine earlier, and while the airport is kind of in the center of the screen, above that is the mine. It really is impressive and one of the most exciting tourist attractions in the town. As you fly over the whole region, there are mines littered everywhere, digging up nickel, lithium and many other components of a mobile phone. While the land looks pretty drab from above, down at ground level it's much richer. In fact, we're flying over the Great Western Woodlands, which is the largest remaining area of intact Mediterranean climate woodland on Earth. Here's footage I filmed getting lost earlier, just north of Kalgoorlie. I read on the internet that more than 20% of Australia's native plant species exist here. But back to the flight. Virgin are kind of in this awkward position where they don't know if they're a full service airline or a low cost carrier. So here's a menu of what I could have purchased on board. There was complimentary water offered. It's a short flight at 60 minutes so it wasn't really a good opportunity to review the catering. Not before long the view out of the window became a lot greener and we started our descent down into Perth. I should mention that while there is no internet Wi-Fi, they do offer Wi-Fi streaming, although unfortunately it's not compatible with my MacBook. Other Apple devices are okay, just not the MacBooks, so I had to entertain myself. As many of you would know, Virgin Australia started as a low-cost carrier, but with Ansett's demise, it worked its way up into becoming a full-service airline. In fact, their business class in the A330s and 777 was vastly superior to that offered by Qantas until the Flying Kangaroo upgraded theirs. But even after that, Virgin probably had better catering. Then unfortunately, VA went bankrupt, and now they're just getting back on their feet, albeit with a smaller fleet, and as I said earlier, some uncertainty about if they're going to be a full service airline or chase the low cost market. Now I realise COVID was a huge factor since early 2020, but I just can't understand how any airline operating in Australia, which is one of the most profitable domestic markets in the world, can go bankrupt. They should have made so much money over the last decade that they'd be able to survive the COVID storm. It's really sad seeing so many staff stood down and or retrenched, and all of this happened after operating in one of the most profitable markets. It makes you wonder who was making the decisions in head office and how they managed to snatch loss from the jaws of victory. One can only hope that the new admin team focus on returning the airline to the former glory and also remember to make money because that's what a company does. Without a strong virgin, the flying public will also suffer because VA were the only airline capable of taking the battle up to Qantas. While I do wish Rex all the best, there is no way that they can properly compete with Qantas for the full service market. And without a strong competitor, I can see Qantas pushing the prices up and the perks down. So for someone like me who is a massive Qantas fan and frequent flyer, it's in my own best interest that we have a strong Virgin and that's one of the reasons why I flew with them today, and later in the month as well. 
So how was the flight? Look, it was perfectly fine for a short flight. The crew seemed friendly and we left and arrived on time and the seat itself, as you can see, has plenty of legroom. I did read on their website that they were looking at fixing up their in-flight entertainment streaming so that Max would work. Um, and that's a welcome addition as I see that Qantas Link are about to introduce a similar streaming system onto their F100s and A320s. A few people asked how this does compare to Qantas Link, and to be honest, it's essentially the same. The Qantas Lounge in Kalgoorlie is okay and might save you having to pay for an expensive coffee, but otherwise it's not a huge factor. But I'd be keen to hear your thoughts in the comments below about what Virgin are up to. Should they chase the low cost market, or are there more profits to be had at going down the full service route again? Considering Qantas can get away with charging $300 for a 60 minute flight between Sydney and Melbourne and $800 or $1000 in business, I'd have thought that VA should probably go for the latter. Since I'm over here avoiding COVID, i put together several vlogs on board flights around Western Australia and a World War II bomber. And more are coming, including a trip up to Broome. In fact, it's on board a Virgin Airbus A320, similar to what you can see now, and I'm looking forward to it. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up Thanks for watching and I'll see you another time.